All right. Recording. Yeah. Go ahead. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good evening to all respected Dean uh, Devin of KNMS Town Hall. Uh, and I'm Adrina Adlin as the host for today. So before we start, let us recite uh, Umar Kitab Al-Fatihah. So uh, I guess without any further ado, um, I think we can start straightforward uh, to the commencement of semester two. So uh, Dr. Izzani will uh, present the questions. Okay, in case any one of you who are joining us for the first time at the, at the Office of Deputy Dean Student Development, um, website. There's actually a button there. So for every time we start the town hall, I leave the Google form open for about a few days or a week for you guys to ask your questions. Lah. Okay, so hopefully that will assist and will not waste time. Otherwise, you know, if you ask questions that I cannot answer yet, I need time perhaps to ask. Okay, so this is our first question. This is from the website. Yeah? Then only we'll go from the International Bureau. Okay, will the swimming pool be open? or available. Okay, I, I took this verbatim, eh? cut and paste straight. So if there's any typo whatever, it's on you. Okay, will the swimming pool be open or available till midnight for students living in campus? I'm asking because there's no information. Okay, so I asked the director, Dr. Mahudin, and he mentioned that there is actually an announcement, but I guess they made it, uh, they circulated it on Twitter. So the time would be similar to before, effective January, 2020. Two, the time for swimming pool is six to seven, session one, and uh, sorry, five to six, session one, and six to seven, session two for both brothers and sisters. It's not changed yet. So if you're wondering why is the time limited, it's because most of the lifeguards are also UAE students who aren't here. Okay, but of course, the time may be expanded sooner as uh, soon when more students come back to campus. Okay, I hope this answered your question. All right. Okay, and um, next question. Okay, this is a very long one, but basically the whole point is um, the student wants to confirm will classes be conducted physically or hybrid? Let's ask the dean so he can repeat himself. <laughs> I'm from Bangladesh. <laughs> Recently, I was in an essay for our coming semester, will be conducted face to face. Aspired and working on my visa after the process, I can apply for authorization. And after so, well, it, it, this, so I want to know if it confirmed or is it conducted physically or hybrid. <clears throat> okay, so basically, classes is going to is going to go on uh, uh, hybrid lah. Uh, classes will go on, uh, and if uh, if if you have read the guideline issued by the university. Okay. Uh, all classes will need to take into account the students who are not able to uh, who are not able to attend uh, physically. I hope this answer your question, yeah, um, brother or sister. Okay, so it will be, of course, if everyone is physically present, then then the lecture might be able to conduct a full physical class. But again, it's up to the lecture, maybe once a week. But if there are students, can there are students who are not around then yes it will be hybrid okay next question next okay again same thing it will be hybrid okay or slash online okay next question before our admission to mahala is there any rukia recitation for every mahala since they may they are empty for quite a long time <laughs> this is to, yeah the kind of things i get uh this is to prevent okay the thing is i take your question very seriously i did ask the RSD and they have informed me uh, that for certain mahalas, okay, they do um, uh, well recite yes, you know, give rec yes recitation, but it's through the speaker. So meaning it's for the entire mahala ground, okay. And thing is, most mahalas uh, they are actually being um, occupancy because during the semester they are students, 
except during the break. So inshallah, it's a uh, it'll be safe inshallah. But if you feel any you know problems, get this comfort, whatever. They feel free to inform your mahala officer. Like there's an office right down there. Yeah, go there. Yeah, you should contact everything. Okay. But, but it's both physical and non-physical. <laughs> So they, they have tried to clean all the mahala. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Normally, any mahala issues will be dealt with at the mahala. Okay, just, just to inform you, because I know most of you might be new students. Okay, so normally the kulia handles academic matters, student matters, you know, mostly re related to your studies. Lah. If it's related to accommodation, mahala and all that, you contact the mahala, right? Okay, next question. Can I manually register my subject because I can't register those courses? So I'm actually waiting for um, Prof. Naraini. She will be able to answer this. Okay, so let's put this question on hold first. All right, uh, Sorenti, our moderator can take note. Yeah? Um, later when Prof. Naraini joins us, we'll go back to this. Okay, about registration. Next question. Would, what would be the proper procedure? Okay, this would be, if you notice, there's no question here, right? There's no more six, seven, eight, because this is the... The long one. Okay, so this is basically a list of 10 questions being compiled by the International Bureau, mainly from international students. So I hope many of you are here during this town hall today to listen uh, to the responses. Okay, so this question what would be the proper procedure to aid students who are tested positive for COVID 19 in the Mahala and are unable to attend physical classes? From Gary, would you like to answer or would you like me to answer? Oh, okay. So one is in terms of aid, first, first, the first thing is you have to inform, uh, you have to inform the authority, lah. you have to inform the, the Mahala authority, and then they will also inform the, uh, they will also inform the clinic. So in terms of aiding, I think uh, you have to, you have to talk to the authority first, yeah, because you don't want to be, you, after aiding the, the, your friend, you don't want to be tested positive. Yeah, if you are not able, if the student are not able to attend physical class and he is able to uh, attend classes, uh, then uh, he can, if positive, then he can uh, do it online. Most importantly, please remember, if you are tested positive, this includes self-test and whatnot. Because some students, you might have a negative self-test, but you feel, you know, you're a bit suspicious of yourself and you show symptoms. And that's, if that's the case, please go like to our clinic. It's called Sejastro Clinic now, okay? Or the, uh, yeah, medical center is a Sejastro Clinic. But most importantly, yes, please inform your mahala, update your Sejastro, inform your lecturers, okay? Your lecturers need to know that one of their students is positive, so perhaps they can conduct uh, online classes during your quarantine period, okay? Right, next question. What's the procedure to obtain physical metric card for students? Okay, um, to do or to get your metric card, you need to go to Awesome, which is the Office of the Security Management. You know the big gate we have in front of IAM? Yeah, it's on the left. But then I leave? Yeah, Awesome, okay. Yeah, so basically it's uh, at the security, okay? Next question. Okay, ni banyak ni. So perhaps we <laughs> want to read too. I can read. Yeah. Um, students are advised to notify their respective lecturers about the problems with mis returning to face-to-face -face classes by 25 February. However, what is the option for the students who have not registered for the courses for the next semester? The last date of course registration is 11 March. So, uh, some students have personal problems with the due fee payment, selection of the right measure, and other problems that are keeping them from registering before 25 February. And there will be students who will register for some courses after they get the current semester, pass or fail result. And some students might drop at courses in the first week of the semester. What is the option for them? Is Prof Narayani here? Okay, so, um, well, the clear, the basic way to say it would be at the end of the day, of course, for those students who have not registered yet, you don't know who your lecturers are. So for those courses that you do know, okay, let's focus on the courses that you do know who your lecturers are. Let's handle that first. Okay, so the, the courses that you can control, please do inform your lecturers of whatever circumstance you might have. 
Okay, you might be able to come on week two or week three. You inform them because only with good communication can your lecturers prepare for their hybrid classes. Okay, as for classes that you have not yet registered, of course, that one you need to settle first. So the thing is, this thing is ongoing, guys. Okay, so don't really worry about that cut off date. Okay, once you get your classes registered, the new ones, the one that you were in waiting list, whatever, then you can still inform those lecturers that you just registered. So, okay, right. Don't worry, you're not the only one anxious here. All the lecturers, all of us instructors, we're also, um, you know, we want to make sure that no students are left behind. So if you're not able to register yet, you immediately contact your instructors when you do join the classes. Okay, next question. All right, as per the survey conducted, there are approximately 64 to 70 international students assuming a handful of students might not have responded. You cannot return to the campus for the, first week, uh, for the first few weeks. The problems include the slow process of the visa you need, Department of Immigration Malaysia and other institutions. Also the flight fares are skyrocketing for some countries. It is also important to consider that quarantine on arrival to Malaysia costs around 2,500 ringgits per person. Considering all of these reasons, a majority of students cannot return in the first half of the semester but the problems mentioned, mentioned will be gradually resolved and the majority of students will be able to return after eight to 10 weeks. Uh, uh, sorry, Lanya. Uh, yeah, is there any continuing or not? It's similar as well, Ken. I mean, uh, I think, uh, go ahead. Half, half the students uh, have, uh, have a look at the guideline that was issued by the university or not? Have you all get the... Uh, uh, get the guideline from the university? Uh, yes, sir. I was the one who compiled these questions. I am a representative of the International Bureau. Uh -huh. uh, we, compiled, we made this question based on the data we received from or, almost 85 responses. Yeah. And all of, the, all of the responses, they were anxious because they were able to come in the fourth, fifth, or seventh, or eighth week. Until eighth yeah. week, they can return, but they were very anxious. I mean, the responses were very anxious. So in that case, like what will be the, uh, it is a continuation of the first question, which is like, what will be the mode of semester in case the first half of the semester will be hybrid and the second half of the semester will be completely offline. So that was the question. Yeah, so I think, I think that the answer is if you are not able to return, then it's going to be in online. When, you, when the student is here, then, then the class is going to be face-to-face. So that's how the university is going to accommodate. Yeah. Only your lecturers will be able to inform you straight up, you know, what yeah. are we going to have? We're going to yeah. be online or hybrid. So yeah. if you don't communicate with them, they won't be able to help you. Okay? Okay. All right. Previous time. Oh, go on. Sorry, Nelly. The previous town hall meeting discussed the mode of next semester. It was mentioned that the instructors are given flexibility in arranging the mode of classes for those who are unable to retain. A student registers around six to seven classes per semester. This means that a student has to go through the ordeal of dealing with six to seven types of classes each week. Will there be any standardized types of classes an instructor can choose from, the for, from for the students who are unable to retain? Okay, I guess this the. Yeah. Okay, I think we've mentioned before this that the course offering were prepared much much earlier, before the university and the ministry. Then, I mean, before we've made before they've made the announcement for students to return. So we've already made prepared the course offering. So therefore, to answer your your inquiry, because there are some students who still email me and ask how to apply for online classes how to apply for online classes. Your, the answer is very simple. There are no online classes specifically because courses have already been assigned to the instructors. Therefore, whatever you see in the uh, Ahmad Loom, uh, that, that's it. However, if you're not able to return, again, back to the guideline, if you're not able to return due to health or traveling restrictions, whatever you mentioned before was included in traveling restrictions. Lah, right. So inform your instructors, inform your lecturers. So they'll be able to plan to have hybrid classes. Okay, right. So in this case, uh, does this mean that you need to go through the ordeal of dealing with six, seven types of classes each week? Unfortunately, 
uh, not only you, even the instructors would have to deal with not just six or seven students, but hundreds of students, because we do have teach other students in other different classes. So hopefully not, but here we do not have any standardized types of classes like online. Okay, so yes, I know it's unfortunate to be hearing that you have to inform seven instructors and perhaps get seven different uh, modes of teaching or modes of learning for each of your classes. But yes, we do empower your um, in respective lecturers on how they conduct their classes. Okay, if there are any issues, any problems, do share with them your concerns. So, okay, uh, Prof. Yeri, go yep. ahead. I think it's just much faster if you communicate. When I say communicate, it could be email. If your lecture is given a WhatsApp class group, do that. It's much faster and more efficient if you contact your lecturers directly instead of emailing me, or some of you like to email MSES, the MSES will get to me, and then I will go and get your lecturers. Get what I mean? So it's just a longer circle. So why don't you just communicate with your lecturers directly? All right? Okay. Uh and I um, don't know whether there is six, seven type of classes each week. So basically, if you are not, uh, if you are not here, for sure you will not be able to attend the classes physically, right? So if you are over here, then it uh, is going to be hybrid. There will be some classes that are going to be face to face. That are going to be some classes that are online. So that's only I don't know one or two type of classes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so it's not it's, yeah. Yeah, it's either hybrid yeah. or hybrid. <laughs> yeah, either hybrid or hybrid. So basically it's hybrid. Mainly, mainly hybrid. Uh, okay. Your indi your individual lecturers would inform you yeah, yeah. how many times a week they want to meet you physically. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. A previous town hall meeting discussed the students who are not able to return may refer to previous semester material. It was implied that a student might have to go through the previous semester's recorded session. However, using this type of class does not allow students to be updated about the assignments. Okay, uh, let me just answer. Because uh, again, uh, if you are talking about if you have experience attending face-to-face uh, -face classes with the lecturers over here, one of the things that the lecturers need to have is the lecturer is going to have an office hour okay so even if let's say what you have to do is you have to refer to previous semester uh, content it, there, there's going to be an office hours with the lecturers where the lecturer is going to communicate to what are what are the things that you have to do and if let's say you are already familiar with italim or you are familiar with google class classroom then uh, if you yeah, in your classes this semester, you will go, you are going to get a new assignment rather than assignments that uh, that was given uh, last semester. Okay, so there will be discussion with lecturers. Okay, if you are not able to, uh, if you are not able to come back uh, to, if you are not able to come back to campus, okay, you can you can uh, you can zoom, you can Google Meet with your lecturers during their during their office hours and ask questions about the materials that you have been assigned to, uh, you have been assigned to read. All right. Yep. So there will be a lot of discussion with uh when, when you discuss with your lecturer, and the lecturer is going to tell you okay, what are the things that you have to uh, that you have to do. So that's why it's very important for you to uh, communicate with the lecturers, especially if you are not able to uh, if you are not able to return. Okay. Next question. Uh, instructors are given flexibility in conducting an online or offline final assessment as per the class. Assuming that the section has 10% of non returning students and the instructor chooses to give the 10% students an individual final assessment and choose to continue with the offline exam for the rest of the students, this is one scenario. And since the lecturers are given flexibility, a number of different scenarios will arise. Is the assessment method fair among students? Okay, so first is uh, by uh... By asking this question, we are assuming that uh, the final assessment is not fair. Okay, so when lecturers uh, come up with the final assessment, they have tried to make the assessment to be fair, uh, to be to, to be as fair as uh, as possible. Okay, uh, uh, some kuliah have already have this uh, this hybrid uh, situation. 
uh, what has happened in CAED is that they, they are students who are not able to return. If for, for your information, CAED, uh, they have been having face-to-face -face classes uh, since uh, uh, for, for the past two years. Okay, students have to return, okay, but there are a small number of students who are not able to return. Okay, so with regard to with regard to final exam, what they have done is that for students who are here, the students have to sit for the uh, final exam as, uh, as usual when you have face to face. Okay, but uh, for students who are not able to return, what they have, uh, they are also have taking the exam at the same time. Okay, but uh, one of the requirements that uh, the Kuliah of Architecture have done is that they ask the students to turn on their cameras okay, for the whole uh, for the whole exam time. Okay? And because the number of students who are uh, who are online are, are much smaller, so then it is much easier to it is much easier to monitor the students. Okay? So but but the thing is that when your lecturers come up with the final exam, they have they have make sure that the, the exam are uh, the exam are fair, whether it is final assessment, whether it is group work. Uh, whether it is a um, final exam okay so exam have to be valid exam have to be fair and exam have to be uh, there are three things i forgot the third one <laughs> okay uh, so don't worry prof Rani, would you like to say anything or would you like to add anything okay uh, uh, with regard to the final assessment i think what we are normally uh, proposing or uh, requesting all the lecturers to have the same final assessment for all students. So that will be fair to all. And for those who are in campus, then we will have, for example, physical uh, exam for them. But for those who are not in campus, then they will have to take the online assessment or online final exam. But we can also have the same time and also the same questions. But of course, for the online student, they can have additional time for the submission because they have to submit uh, uh, online. So that's what we have to, I mean, to, to ensure uh, happen to, to the lecturers because otherwise I think it's very also difficult to ensure the fairness of the uh, fund assessment if we are given the different set of questions. But if the lecturers can do that, then there shouldn't be an issue. Like they can also have the same, I mean, different fund assessment for different group of people. But at the end of the day, I think uh, I, I, I am mute myself or not <laughs> just now. Sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> okay, I think I'm just talking about the same uh, final assessment given to, to all students, uh, even though they are online or physical. Then for that reason, I think the lectures can also plan somehow to ensure that they will give the final assessment to the, to the students who are in Mahala. Uh, I mean, uh, the same time as the students who are also doing online. But of course, those who are doing online, they have to have additional time for the submission because they have to submit the answers online. So I think that will ensure that the, the assessments are fair to all to ensure that there's no, uh, and, and not, not fair to, to give for the assessment to all students. So that's what I can uh, uh, respond so far. But those lecturers who are planning to have different assessment, I think they also will have, I mean, they already ensure that the assessment are also fair as mentioned by Prof Dean just now. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Ziani. Okay, this is another question. Yeah. There are international students who cannot return for the whole semester. The personal and family health reasons are compelling them to stay home. What will be the class mode for such students? Although this case might seem similar to the visa problems, it is important to note that visa problems are expected to resolve in the next eight to 10 weeks. These severe health problems and some extreme visa cases are for the whole semester. Yes, the answer would be the same, kind okay, Prof. Rani. Yes, I think Prof. Gairu also has mentioned the answer just now. I think we are, I mean, they can just inform the lecturers and they will have, I mean, online classes with the lecturer or the pre-recorded video chat with them and so on. So I think we have the same answer as before for this question as well. Remember, most importantly, inform your lecturers for all the courses. Yes. They would need to know whether you're here or not. And if they aren't, then you're actually helping them to assist you how to teach you, how to get materials across to you, okay? 
Yeah, please. Very important for you to inform. Make you have. I mean, you know all your subjects that you are taking for the semester. So please ensure that you you inform all the lecturers because the lecturer will not be able to know whether you are coming to the class or not, or you will be physically coming to the class, unless you are. I mean, writing to them, uh, informing them whether you have problem to to come to the to the university. Well, madam. I have informed my some lecturers, but they say they are waiting for the decision of uh, from Korea. From Peru, I think we don't have this. I mean, we have given our decision as the Korea, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh -huh. well, yeah. they say they are waiting for the the announcement from the Korea. You know, this is very funny questions. Some of us send the message to the send the email message to the lecturer, and the lecturer asks they didn't receive any, uh, any, uh, I mean the, any documents, any form from the Korea. So and uh, you here talk about we ask the lecturer for next semester will be the hybrid or face to face, and there's a lecturer waiting for your documents. I don't know we, uh, who should we listen. Brother, do you mind telling me? I mean, you don't have to tell me now, but you do. You can. Uh, please let me know who are these lecturers. That's the best way. Okay. Yeah. So specifically tell me or tell yeah, me is easier. You can email me directly or you can inform to your international bureau, Brother Mumin. Tell me who these lecturers are. Okay. As of now, all classes will be hybrid. If every 100% of the students are here physically, it will be physical, physical classes. And again, maybe it's once a week or twice a week, whichever, but it will be hybrid. So please, for these two students, you said that you emailed your lecturers. And they mentioned they didn't know whatever. Please tell me. Thank you. Yes, it's Maria. You raise your hand. Hold on. Yes, it's um, Maria. Yeah, assalamu alaikum, madam. Uh, I think uh, we meet some problem with stealing uh, HS because uh, for our Kulia, uh, yes, we received the uh, email from the lecturer and then they uh, agreed to have online classes. Uh, but then uh, when we deal with HS, I email to uh, lectures and also email to the Mahal, uh, no, sorry, uh, Kulia office. But then they say uh, their decision is to just have physical class. But then most of us, uh, like uh, me and my friends, we are uh, just have one semester left. We are graduating students. So uh, we are left some classes like uh, UNGS and then uh, some language class. But then uh, it's physics, uh, physics. So I don't know what to do. Physics? Sorry, physics? Yeah. Physical. 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 Yeah. physical. Yeah, I think for, for you, I, the best is for you to, uh, to, to, to email me in the dean because uh, every Kulia has their own ways of, uh, of doing things. But the guideline from the university is that uh, the Kulia have to accommodate students who are not able to return. Because we can, for, for now, we can only talk about uh, Kulia of economy. But the, the, the guideline from the university is that the Kulia, every Kulia in the university need to accommodate students who are not able to return. If you're having issues with lecturers from other Kulias, because I thought it was our lecturers, see? If it's Kulia, K-E-N-M-S lecturers, then it was, it's under our Kulia. But if you're talking about lectures from other Kulia, then Apatari, Apavari would like them yeah. to email yeah. you. Yeah, just email it to me. Yeah. Email the dean, okay? If it's uh, lectures yeah. from other Kulias, if it's because from our know, Kulia. Yeah. I know they, they I, I don't think they are offering any of the UNGS courses online. Yeah, they're the, all physical. The, uh, yeah, the UNGS courses are all physical. Yeah, yeah but, that, is not uh, but that the decision of the other Kulia, not the Kulia, not the Kulia of economics. IRK, right? Yeah. Yeah, UNGS are all under K I AHAS K I R K H S. So it is, you know, yeah. to the Kulia and how they want to provide. So all right. So does does this answer your questions, uh, Maria and the two brothers just now? Okay, thank you, madam. All right. Uh, Zayi, sorry, Zima, do you have a question? Your yeah. Hands? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for those students who could return to the campus. Uh, is the university 100% uh, sure that the students will not get infected? No. Sorry? You know, I mean, 100% sure? sure that the students will not get infected. Uh, no one will be able to ensure that 
Uh, no, I will be hundred percent sure. So that's that magic, brother. <laughs> Even us, we have we are double dosed. We have oh, boosters. No. There's still that chance. If you took statistics, you would know. It's yeah. just to lessen the probability of getting it more severe. All right. Okay. So I think it's quite unfair for you to be asking. Can I comfort? Can I, you know, make sure that the safety of everyone? Of course not. Yeah. So there is always a trade-off between uh, between having these face-to-face -face classes and uh, and having online classes, but as a university, we have to go. We have to try to move back uh, to live uh, a normal life as what we have uh, been living uh, two years before. So we cannot, because we also look at all the guidelines from the uh, from the Malaysian government. So the Malaysian government have, in a way, have instructed all universities to be face uh, to be at least hybrid. Okay? so that's why that's why we have this. Uh, uh, we are asking students to uh, to return. So it's all about risk and return. Now. For, for us to say that 100% we will not get infected, we cannot say that. Okay? Even uh, no one will be able to say that. I think what's most important is for everyone, including students, to follow the SOPs closely. Uh, if we start defaulting the SOPs established by universities, uh, then nobody can ensure, you know, 100% free from infection. So everyone has a play, has a role to play, including students. When you are in Mahala, please ensure that you know the SOPs and also follow the SOPs closely. And likewise for the lecturers and staff uh, of the university. Yeah. So what we can do is we can just we can try to reduce the probability of students uh, getting uh, getting infected. Okay. But looking at the uh, cases that we have now okay and having that the government are confident to open the border so that's why the university have opened up and asked to them to and asked to them to return okay don't worry we can always go back to any past questions right yeah. okay next Will the, will the cost drop on the period be the same as the latest calendar released by Ahmad or will it be extended? Because some students might opt to drop some courses later after some weeks given the special situation of the next semester. Currently, I think that there is no... Currently, the, the, the schedule is uh, as is. Yeah, I think there's no uh, new announcement by Ahmad yet. So we still have to follow the current schedule. Yeah, because basically what the university is trying to do is trying to go back to the uh, to the normal C periods that we had a few years ago. Okay, there's someone else raising the hand. Yes, Brother Mans. Assalamu alaikum. Um, uh, I wanted to ask if uh, there will be any uh, tariff week or, you know, kind of a tour for new students as in uh, the second or the first year students who have never been on campus before. Uh, you mean like, new, uh, but not so not new. Not exactly, the new uh, students. They're not so new. <laughs> yes, who have been online. Um, like me. Did, did you join the <laughs> town roof at the beginning of the semester, Brother Mas? This semester, right? Were you a new student this semester or so, last? Uh, Sorry? This semester. So I'm going to, I'm going in my second year. Oh, um, yeah. oh yeah. not that new lah. Yeah. <laughs> next semester still yeah. relatively new okay so what uh, MCF so i was i was basically. online for one year yeah oh we were working from home for 100 days 400 hold on two years okay about the tak roof we will have a hybrid slash online tak roof for the new students as in the ones coming in a few days for those students who are not so new but have never set foot on campus uh, i believe mcs would have a session with you Right, Nelly, um, whereby MCS will bring you guys for a tour around KNMS to show you around. Uh, Nelly, yes, would you like to? Yes, on behalf of, of MCS, um, for the students who have not never been in the campus, we'll try to provide you with the UIE map and also uh, some videos of the Kulia uh, layout and Kulia tour so that you can actually familiarize. But, um, Physical tour, I don't think it's re, um, much possible since uh, after you enter, you will uh, uh, start classes. Start classes right away, right? So, yeah. 
I think we can provide you with a few materials for that. The best way to learn is just to dive in there. I guess when you are there, you have no choice but to know where things are. <laughs> Okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. Thank All you. Right. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm bad in geography. So, yeah, I totally get you. Whoever thinks if you're bad in geography, okay, you have a friend in me, okay? All right, next question. Will the 50, sorry, sorry, Sila, Sila, maybe. Will the 50 ringgit charge for the study leave application be waived off by Kunia for the next semester in case a student wishes to take study leave? Unfortunately not, it's the university rules, you still need to pay the 50 ringgit charge. But the, the guy yep. yeah. As of now, yes, they have to pay. As of now. Unfortunately, because it's a university rule. Okay. Are there any other questions? Ah, oh, don't have. Okay, <laughs> anyway, don't worry, we're, we're not ending. If you have any other questions, because I see there are like nine, nine things in the chat box there. So I, I leave it to the moderator now, okay? Um, um, I mean, any, before that, uh, can we go to the fifth uh, question? Fifth question. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, yeah, that did. Oh, yeah. Because Prof. Nine is here. Okay. Stop me. Is this this one? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Prof. Well, you can reserve for it. Because I think normally the reserve leave is still open last time lah, during the during the pre-registration. Uh, I, I don't know. I just would like to know why. Because those who are having those who have registered uh, earlier, then we have allocated them to the subjects to the courses. So even though the session already closed at that point of time during pre-registration, then the student can still uh, pre can still reserve. And based on the reserve, I think we have uh, absorbed all to, to the existing section. So uh, I'm not sure the reason for this student who not able to to register to reserve last time. Uh, but uh, I think the manual registration I think we don't have yet. I mean, in the kulia because everything must be done online. But we have to see case by case basis as well later to to see whether the academic unit can register uh, you based on the reason that you have you have to give to us. Okay, Sister Rawaha has her hands, hand raised. Uh, I'm Brother, Brother Rawaha. <laughs> Brother Rawaha. Yeah, uh, I ha I'm a representative of International Bureau and I have two questions here. What do we mean by hybrid? Is that, will there be a camera inside the room? Because will there be a camera inside the room and the online students will be staying online or will be just to binary offline or online? So is it hybrid like this or it, will it be like uh, those like small, like small number of students might not join the class and they might have to join through, uh, join, jo join through a Zoom meeting, which is conducted in the class like MCES, uh uh, what was that? Uh, the event was conducted. It was both Zoom and physical, the same event. So will the classes be conducted that way or will it be just like either online, completely online or either fully offline? Uh, what 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 sense is the word hybrid used here? Is that your second, what's your second question? Uh, my second question is international students have to spend uh, between 5,000 to 10,000 ringgits. Uh, to return to campus or even more for some countries and for some cities. So in case the Kulia says that it's, it's binary, it's either online or offline. So for example, two students in a section of 30 or 40 students, two students cannot attend the class and the whole class is going to be online. Is it worth for the students to spend so much money and can get back to campus and spend monthly expenses here just to sit in the room and attend the online classes? Okay, would like to answer first, or Professor Okay, so what what do we mean by hybrid? Uh, first is uh, in a way we we leave. Uh, you, what students have to do, they have to discuss with the uh, with the lecturers on how the lecturers is going to conduct the, the the class. Okay, so there are a lot of different ways of having of having a hybrid class. So you can have the lecturers having uh, student uh, 
sitting uh, on the class for uh, students uh, that are face to face going to be in class and at the same time you may have a camera okay that is going to show uh, and the slide and the class is going to be uh, going to be done concurrently okay the online and the uh, online and face to face okay you can have a situations where uh, the lecturer is going to give you uh, recorded materials where you have to uh, where you have to study the recorded material and after that there's going to be a discussion with the lecturers whether uh, uh, via zoom or via google meet okay whether it is going to be in group or it's going to be uh, just just one on one okay so there, there are there are different ways that the lecturers are going to uh, going to handle the class so there is not one way of how the lecturers are going to handle the class the, like, the way the lecturer is going to handle the class is going to depend on how many students are, are here physically and how many students are going to be uh, are not able to are not able to return okay if let's say you have just one student are not able to return the way that the way the lecturer is going to handle may be different when you have half of the student are not able to are not able to return okay so for us to say uh, for us to define what is hybrid uh, for now, it, it is not it's going to be easy because there are a lot of different permutations of what is going to happen uh, in the class. Okay? So that's why we leave, we leave it to the wisdom of the lecturers to, to decide what is the best for, uh, for his or her uh, for his or her students. Okay. And for the next, what was the next question just now? For the first is the definition. Okay. Uh, if it is if it is binary either offline or online so right. is it worth for students to travel with so many expenses and then spend monthly expenses here on campus just to sit in the mahalla room and attend the online classes which we can afford, which we they can of course of course attend from their home from what we've mentioned just now the classes would be hybrid it's not a binary either physical but dean would you like to clarify yeah sure. thank you yeah but 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 in the end, if you are talking about us students, uh, you are not just talking about this semester because you have semester three and then you have, uh, you have semester one. The, the, the student in the end will have to return to uh, will have to return to campus okay, because we, the the university is not an open university. The university is not an online university where we that where we can uh, teach everything online. The license that is given to the university is a face to face you know face to face university. Okay, so that's the license given to the university. We are able to do this all these online classes just because of this COVID. Okay, and as the situations become better, we have to go back to we have to go back to our normal uh, condition. Does that answer you, Brother Awahab? Yeah, uh, yes. And I have a general question, not related to the semester. I see there are like fire exit and all those maps in the Tulia in, in every level. But I'm a third year student. I never know what that is, like where to exit and all. <laughs> General security question. We, are, we were never, never given a briefing on the fire escape or anything, except for some events. Mm -hmm. Like the whole Kulia briefing, like there is a fire uh, security briefing, right? In every, uh, like for example, our Kulia has all fire, uh, fi fire safety systems, but we were not brief of how to react in a fire situation or anything we it's just maps random maps uh, no, not random of course there are maps uh, on each floor on each level of Tulia building but we never know how to use it so it would be great if there is a briefing situation for students uh, or, a briefing on fire safety yeah well the staff was briefed if anything happens and that thing rings gather your students Go to the uh, the power of uh, There's a gathering. <laughs> Go to the point. Yeah, I mean that's what um, the lecturers have been briefed like uh, that. Some, some somewhere uh, under the Poco Club or something. There's a tree. So if you are in class, okay, this is talking about in class. Then the lecturers would be in a way responsible, right? So if there's normally there'll be that bell, right? Okay, so everyone will follow, follow the leader and go straight to the assembly point. Uh, but I guess you're asking if it's at the Mahala or what not. So I, I uh, no, no, I was talking specifically oh, about Akulia building. Um, on the map, they mentioned kind of the assembly point. 
Maybe. Yeah, but if a fire breaks out, who has time to read that map? I don't know. My basic basic instinct survival is if I hear a bell, I just run. I run anywhere free. Uh, okay. Brother, you don't have to wait until the fire breaks out. That's why you need to familiarize with the entry <laughs> point, exit points, all the maps in the Kulia before the fire breaks out. So okay. all of us have the responsibility to actually, you know, look for the map and study the map and make sure well versed about the entry and exit points of the Kulia. Okay. This is the one question that I never expected. <laughs> Pop quiz, okay? Uh, pop quiz, betul. It's <laughs> really pop quiz. Okay, inshallah, don't worry. I, I will bring this uh, with MTS as well and, yeah. and see if we can. I think um, what we can do, we, we can we can uh, inform OSHB, the Office of Safety, Health and Build Environment of the university that's in charge of the safety. Thank you for your question, Father Ramaha. <laughs> we will make sure to look at the entry point, the safety entry now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other hands raised? Okay, I think I'll leave it to the moderator. Feel free if you would like to read questions from the chat. Group, okay, Sister okay. Adriana. All right. So, uh, there are some questions in the chat box. That's from um, Sister Nur Shazana. Um, she asked that whether she need to do a medical checkup before entering IIUM since during the first semester she only had online classes at home. So if uh, she need to do a medical checkup, uh, does she need to do in IIUM? You mean test uh, COVID positive or not? No, no, mm. medical checkup. Usually, the medical checkup, uh, the medical checkup is handled by the uh, by the mm. clinic. Isn't that like before maso, as in enroll as a student? Uh, after the student come in, they are going to be medical checkup. Mm. So she can go straight to the clinic. Mm. Sister, um, sorry, say um to the sister, yeah, go to the psychiatric clinic for the medical checkup. All right. So next from uh Yi Hui Wang, um, can he apply for a delay in returning to university in case um uh the approval for travel uh is late? I think we have answered the question. So, because of the visa, basically you start with online. Then when you come in, then you start whatever we have uh, in the kuliah. That's the traveling restrictions yeah. in a way, kind of. So yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> One question from Radha Sirajuddin. Um, he have emailed to his uh, lecturers for the next semester. However, only one lecturer responded. So uh, I'm not sure whether the other lecturers received my email or not. So what should he do? This one I uh, responded in the chat. Uh, yeah. I think please bear with the lecturers. Lah. We just yeah. finalized our grades yesterday. Yeah. I think they were busy and fully occupied. Inshallah, they will respond this week. If not, please send another email reminder. Now they are busy preparing for next week classes. Uh, one, one. It's never ending. Uh, it's never ending for us. No, I hope by crook, the, the class will start, right? Yeah. By seven. So the lecturer's gonna say hi or not hi. So they'll find out whether you'll be attending classes or not. But thank you for taking the initiative to email. That's great. Okay. Um there is one more question. Someone raising hand, sister. Oh, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, Hai, orang mana? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Ini tanya okay, masak je lah. <laughs> I'm sorry for not turning on my camera. I'm cooking in the kitchen. Alright, um, I have uh, some questions um, on behalf of the uh, PD student actually. Um, 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 I know that this is already has been answered about the uh, online, uh, about our, uh, the, the hybrid classes. Alright. And I I need um, uh, a clarification from our dean and our deputy uh, dean postgraduate to say it out loud uh, about this matter because um, PG keep asking about this and another thing is some PG uh, another PG asking about 
um, the, the, the classes again because uh, he mentioned that he is working in different states and it is hard for, for, for the student to come for, for physical classes. So I need this clarification again uh, so that the, the question being answered by the authority um, uh, and uh, it may make it clear to everybody in DG. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Prof. Dr. Zola. And the Dean. Dr. Zola. <laughs> I think uh, the answer is that uh, we allow students uh, to follow online classes provided they have uh, medical reasons and travel restrictions. I think if you are if the student is traveling uh, due to work, I think what if we have face-to-face -face classes? Yeah, the students still required to attend the class. Uh, but there is a flexibility given to the lecturer in which uh, the lecturer can organize um, hybrid classes or postgraduate cl uh, classes. Um, one week is face-to-face -face for those students who are able to return on campus, and the following is hybrid classes. Uh, in the event they are international students or students who are unable to return to campus due to medical reasons and travel restrictions, then there will be hybrid classes organized by the lecturers. So this particular student can actually uh, opt for hybrid classes yeah? uh, to join the class uh, online. But again, the, the, the reason is, you know, because of the travel restriction is, to me, it's not acceptable if you, you know, if you have enrolled into a postgraduate program. Uh, so student, the student must, have make, must make an, an effort to ensure they attend physical classes in the event the classes that they enroll, you know, uh, have all the students ready to go for face-to-face -face classes. Because if 100% students enrolled in a particular course are able to attend the class, then the lecturer will only do physical classes, no hybrid. So that student must make it a point to attend the class. So this uh, flexibility is given due to COVID reasons, yeah, a medical reason and also travel restriction, restriction especially for the international students students who have problems getting the science on. But for the local students, they are unable to attend the physical classes because they have to travel due to work. I think they have to manage. Basically, what is going to happen in SEM1, all the classes is going to be is going to be face to face. So the, the student will not be able to use the same reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the acceptable reasons are medical reasons, travel restrictions. But uh, traveling due to work, then cannot attend physical classes, that could happen out of COVID also. So before enrolling to the postgraduate program, students must actually know what is the expectation in terms of the classes uh, attended. Uh, I hope that clarifies the question, eh, Shakira. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, actually, some some of uh, of the seniors uh, uh, in uh, in the session actually one of them commenting that uh, last time when she was uh, working in Pahang, she's traveling um, every week to attend classes. So I think that is not. Uh, uh, that is not an excuse for others to, to skip classes because of you are from other state and need to travel and what. Because as a student, yes. we have committed, so we have to do it and deal with it. Because the, the, the so-called, um, uh, what do we say? What do you say? Uh, acceptable reasons are due to COVID-related reasons. Yeah? Due to COVID-related reasons. Could be travel restrictions or or medical reasons due to COVID. But uh, this traveling, you know, due to work, etc., it could happen also okay, with COVID. So they have to manage. If they could travel to work, why aren't you able to travel to IAM for class? Similar like before. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a commitment required if you enroll into the postgraduate program. Yeah.
Okay, so I think hopefully uh, Dr. Zul's answer has uh, satisfied them. <laughs> okay, Sister Adrina, go on. Thank you, Dr. Zul. Uh, one question from Ali Fahmi. In an event of positive cases happen in class, would the class be halted? or only affected students are excused from class. In an event of positive cases happen in class, will the class be halted or only affected students are excused from class? First things first, when if if the case, if a student is positive, you have to inform three, board, three places, right? The Mahala, if they're staying in Mahala. Uh, update my structure inform the lecturers. Now, what the lecturer would do would be depending on the lecturer. The lecturer may decide to have the class online during the quarantine period or whichever. Okay, so we leave that to the wisdom of the lecturers. But obviously, the lecturer, him or herself, would like to be safe as well as the welfare of the other students, right? All right. Um, there is one question from uh, Hafika, but it's quite long. Um, can I read all the statements? <laughs> so, what, what's the conclusion of the question? <laughs> conclusion? Okay, hold on. Hafika. Uh, Hafika. Hafika. Okay, go on, go on. So she is currently in uh, her second year. Uh, but before this, she was in another Kulia, HS. And uh, she has already completed all UNJS subjects before entering KNMS. So, however, due to the recent change of course code, um, her previous UNJS subjects are listed as not yet taken in her current study plan. So, um, uh, she asked if, um, May I know will the Kulia able to change the status of the subjects in her study plan from not yet taken to successfully taken to ease her in calculating? Uh, I her think at uh, uh, the Kulia, we need to know the detail. I don't think we'll be able to answer uh, the, the question. We need to know what are the classes and everything. Yeah, I think, I mean, please request the student to write into the academic unit and provide the metric number, the details of the courses and so on. So the academic unit will be able to check and then update her status if possible. All right. Um, uh, one question from uh, Abdi Shakur Mumi. Uh, he asked if uh, should we do a visa task force? Uh, I may have to add to this uh, because we are the question was from International Bureau. We are having troubles with visa unit, uh, like real troubles. They don't respond to our emails. Uh, no, no I, and this is this problem is not confined to Kulia of Economics or some group of people. It's like universal problem with visa unit that they don't respond. If they respond to the authorities properly and to the students properly, uh, the process will be much faster. So is there any way uh, Kulia can uh, discuss with uh, visa unit in the official manner to make the process faster? Because uh, visa unit just, the, the problems are common among students, but the problem is visa unit does not respond to emails at all for seven days. And in some cases, 20 days, they do not respond to a simple email. This is by way of call, their direct hotline and email. No, right? they don't respond to anything. Even they respond, like uh, sometimes the biggest problem is uh, they respond, one person will be sitting on uh, managing the email and their answer will be different uh, from email, which will be different from the WhatsApp hotline. Uh, and if you go to Visa Unit, they just shout at us and they'll uh, ask us to leave the room uh, soon. So only two options, which is email and hotline. Sometimes the answers are different between two people, two people responding. So it's a big trouble. Uh, is there any way? Uh, it's not a question, it's a request to Kulia that uh, you may uh, request visa unit or in official manners to make the process faster. I, I think in terms of visa question, we the we need to know the detail, what, what are the what are the issue because sometimes the issue is with the student sometimes the issue with the uh, with the visa unit sometimes the issue is with immigration so
So there are a lot of different things that is uh, that is happening. Uh, so so it's not easy for us to say. Uh, in fact, it's not easy. Uh, is we cannot lay blame to uh, whether it's visa unit, whether it's the student, whether it's the is the immigration. So, uh, in term of answering the. Uh, in terms of answering email, as far as I know, they have to answer. They they have their SOPs that they have to uh, that they have to follow. Uh, I do agree with you, sir. That uh, even though uh, not just visa unit students also have problems in sending yeah. proper proper emails. They uh, they send random emails and all those yeah. things. For that, uh, we will collect all the details from the international students facing the problem in our our Kulia. And we'll we'll forward it to MCS board, which will uh, forward to deputy dean, and we can proceed. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have have you talked to the have you talked to SU the international? Uh, yes, yes. Um, um, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm also representative. Yeah. There. So yeah. then. Yeah. So yeah. So it is much more complicated than uh, than yes, that. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I have a final request from IB that. Uh, the announcements uh, for the next semesters are being uh, shared in form of frequently asked question from town hall, like the previous. Uh, it was from the MCS, and just uh, a random thing that most international students don't even know what a town hall is. So when they read the town hall, frequently asked questions from town hall, the title, they just ignore the whole document. So we request Kulia to release an official statement with the with all the details uh, for the next semester as soon as possible because international students are literally panicking about, about the next semester even though they should not uh, they are panicking and they are waiting eagerly waiting for the Kulia's announcement to be released uh, uh, and not emphasis. Okay, so what what do you want in the announcement? Uh, the same thing we discussed here. Uh, you can contact your uh, instructor. Wait, hold on, Brother Rawaha. Can it yes, be possible Yes. before you want us to make an announcement, is it possible sure. for the International Bureau to make sure that all international students attend the town hall? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be you know, somewhat your part as well to assist the Kuliya? Uh, yes. Of right, course, because we are trying are, to do that. We not just you and Brother Mumin, but you are a part of Kuliya now. Uh, right? Yes. Uh, not, uh, not just the students. You're we can't also force. We can't force students to come. So what makes you think that if we make an announcement, you like they'll make sure they're uh, ready? Like, uh, like we have students from Kulia of uh, Kulia of uh, uh, IRKHS uh, who are much more satisfied with the announcement which they released two days ago, including the announcement for UNGS courses, which they said that if the course if the student cannot come, they can choose the hybrid mode, and they gave clear clarifications on what hybrid mode was meant. They said like 50% classes will be offline and 50% will be online. And the management of and there are so many things. I don't want to get into yeah, so that. That would be great. Yeah. Now. UNGS yeah. is offered by RKHS. They are they, yeah, they, they are that they are positive and negative of having that uh, strict announcement. Uh because what we are trying to do is if you if you know about the Sajahtra Academic Framework, so one of the things that we, we are trying to do is to uh, to have more flexibility okay, with regard to what the lecturers will be able to will be able to do. So if we come up with an announcement, so uh, there is a possibility that uh, the the, flexi the flexibility will not be will not be there. So for sure we can say that uh, hybrid is fifty percent online, fifty percent fifty percent face to face. Okay, but uh, maybe it's not. It's not the best for the student to have something that is fifty percent online, something that is fifty percent face to face. Okay, so so you have the you have the positive side of uh, uh, of a guideline uh, a guideline. You have a negative side of uh, a strict guidelines that uh, that you talk about. Okay, so that's why the university have come up with their guideline with regard to uh, with regard to student returning. So basically, what we say. In the guideline that, that coming up, coming from the university is that yeah. all students will have to come back, except those students who are not uh, who have issues, uh, traveling uh, issues, or they have uh, health issues. Okay, but then what go, what is the kuliah going to do? Kuliah going to accommodate students who are not able to 
uh, who are not able to return. So the way we accommodate is going to be different. It's going to depend on the situation of the student. Okay? Some students, the accommodation for student that's coming from China is going to be different from student that's coming from uh, that's coming from Indonesia or student coming from Bangladesh. So if let's say hybrid, if we, if we say that hybrid is 50%, uh, 50 percent face to face and 50% online, then most of the student who's going to get visa issues because uh, that's going to have 10 week or 11 week or 12 week visa issues, they will not be able to satisfy that 50% face to face, 50% online. Okay? So they, they are positive and they, they are negative. Okay, so what we are trying to do at the kuliah over here, we are trying to, we are trying to accommodate uh, as best as possible. Okay, we try to see what is the best for the, what is the best for the student. Thank you for the clarification. So thank you very much. And just that, uh, even even if the kuliah does not mention that how the hybrid mode because it's complete flexibility given to the instructor, a simple is uh, a simple announcement stating that. Uh, a student is required to email uh, the lecturers to for, for, for them to assist in further uh, classes and the mode of classes. It would be really great. Doesn't yeah. MCS give the announcement? Mainly? No. Uh, they gave frequently asked questions, but it was not detailed announcement. And we are specifically requesting from the Kulia and not MCS because many students also don't know what MCS is. So, so the question is that if the students don't know what MCS is. Uh, so, yeah. so you, I, is it my so, fault? Is it the student's fault? Or is it the uh, National Bureau's fault for not promoting what MCS is? Uh, but but uh, everyone should be included regardless of... Exactly. Who Therefore, you guys help us out then. It's yes, National Bureau, you're part of MCS. Okay, there are 153 students here. I don't know among all of you how many are international students. Please do educate and inform your fellow international students who have no idea what the yes, town hall is. We plan to do this every month. If the dean is not here, if Prof. Narayan is not here, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, good Yeah, I'll be here every month. Okay, so if there's any issues, I'll tell you, you can share with me. Okay, of course. Yes, All right, fine. We'll make you happy. I'll make that announcement. I'll find out about Canva. I'll make that Canva. I'll make all that. Okay, Nelly. Okay, they want a proper announcement. Okay, they don't want MCS. Fine. We put a header there. Okay, yeah, and MS. But if they do not attend classes, if they do not do stuff, uh, answer to me. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Very right, much. Good. Because we cannot start it, like we, we cannot uh, now yeah. persuade them to believe what MCS is and all those things at this because we have left we are left with only one week for the classes. So we should do we should, we are we are trying to get the Kulia announcement and then we'll persuade them to know what MCS is. Inshallah. Right. Yeah, right. um, um, just like on my behalf, uh, I guess for International Bureau, you can actually direct to Dr. Yuziani, um, you know, uh, outside of this session, because your concern is real, and I believe that you have the uh, the authority to actually contact Dr. Yuziani directly, so that way. So I guess uh, it's quite late. We'll try to end before 7 15. Um, I think I'll try to take over for a minute, okay? Uh, so the, some other questions there. Yeah, um, uh, the first question is about can they, uh, can students bring in their scooter, like, you know, electronic scooter? Yeah. Really? Yes, I don't know. Jay Wan, you have to ask other. You have to ask awesome. other. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Or, or the Mahala, or what? Okay, I think uh, you, uh, yeah, now you can ask the awesome. Second is um, positive cases. Uh, the class be halted or only affected students are accused of the class. This one for me. Yeah. Up to the lecturers. It, it also depends what uh, what's the SOP at that time. Because the, the SOP keep changing. Okay. So I believe uh, with the lecturers, those contact also will be quarantined. So, what's the latest SOP now? If it's CC1, no need to quarantine, can? Ah. 
You see what's going on in? See, get what I mean? So this is kind of the benefit of not having something set. Otherwise, it would further make it confusing for people. Because the other day you wrote, it says this is this. But now you wrote, so, you know. Uh, don't worry, you're not the only one confused sometimes. What is that? I mean, maybe you can mute the student. The mute, mute eh? Sekejap. Alamak. I thought it was someone. Hold on a minute. Let me mute everyone, yeah? Sekejap. Mute all. Okay, I've I've muted everyone except me. Except, okay, Nelly, you're not mute. Go. All right, okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, the, the study plan on the iMaklum is currently having a problem. So, uh, who should we refer on? Because I try to uh, see mine too, and also we can actually access, but I believe they will actually fix soon. Is there any answer for that? Uh, no? you, you get something recent or what? Long time ago or what? Uh, recent, I, I mean, when we want to access our study plan uh, in the iMaklum, uh, it says that uh, the, the current uh, sites are and is failed to much um yeah so is is something recent or been there for a long time the, the problem i think it's recent uh, recent then most probably they are fixing the system yeah okay, but i think uh, for for you as a student what what at, at least for me as a student uh, i don't think there is a need for you to depend on the on the study plan system because you know what are the courses that you have to take right mm -hmm. Yeah, and then knowing what are the courses that you have to take, then, then you don't, and you know what are the courses that you have taken, and you know the grade that for the courses that you have taken, and from there you should, you should know what are the courses that you have to take for next semester. Right, yeah. also you can refer to your study plan in the pre-read uh, pre website. Uh, yeah. There is the uh, button of study plan there. Okay, the next one is uh, from Muhammad Sirajuddin. Uh, he asks if he can uh, increase his uh, current credit hour with uh, counseling skills too, which is only. Uh, I think we have answered the question some time ago. Yeah, I th uh, rather Muhammad Sarajan, you can uh, search for the FAQ we actually provided uh, by MSES. Okay, the last one is: Will, will all the will all the facilities in Kulia be operated as usual, offices and cafeteria etc. Yeah, all, all as usual. And we follow the SOP lah. So to say it's usual is uh, it's not really usual because because of the SOP then it's going it's become different. Okay, but we follow the SOP as much as possible. Okay, but all offices are open. I think now the office is also open. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the last one, uh, are we allowed to ask questions regarding Mahala? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sister, you can. I, I guess you can directly uh, ask uh, the RSD. Uh, you can email them. You just search uh, RSD IIUM uh, in the website and you'll find their contact number and email. Um, and also you can actually, uh, if you can't reach them, then you can reach MSES. We will try uh, to, uh, to give you the contact of the Mahala office and so on. Okay, I think that's all for today, Town Hall. Uh, thank you. Uh, all the, sorry. All right. Okay. Thank you. All the, the attend. Sorry. The, one last question from Arif Ahmad. I'm currently staying outside the campus and didn't register to return to Mahala due to the outstanding fees. So do they will extend the registration for Mahala? Do I have you? no idea. To be honest, no, no idea. Okay. Uh, same. I don't have to say this. I, I know when students have you know concerns with accommodation. Of, of course. Uh, we were students once, and obviously where we live, it matters a lot. But um, just as how I was answered before when I was a student, I went straight to the hostel, to the Wahala, because the Kulia, which is where you're saying it, we don't really have the answers. So I guess you can ask me and wait for me to contact RSD or Mahala and wait for me to get in touch with you. Alternatively, you can ask them directly. Yeah. Sorry yeah, if the answer is not what you want to hear. Uh, so same goes to Arif, uh, you can ask the RST uh, and search for the contacts. 
uh, when do we get our departments for the second, the newly second year students? Yes, Prof. Noraini can. Uh, I, I assume that you have completed the Google form to apply for the department. So once that form has been completed, then we will assign the department for you. Uh, I guess they don't receive it yet. Does the, does the order have the exact date? Yeah, I think we are just finishing marking our I main uh, exam questions. So give us time. The academic unit is actually now preparing for your results. So we have to end up your result and then only can be released your result on time. So please give us some time as well to, to, to check on this and also to provide the department to the students. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, do I still need to come back to campus as soon as the semester starts when I have flu and cough but not COVID? When I have what? Flu and cough but not COVID. Flu. <laughs> the self test, what does it say? <laughs> I guess it's good if uh, she, Fatima, can go for like uh, the, the, one, the one, the PCR, is it? Is it called PCR? Yeah. Right. For yeah, the PCR is the one that actually put goes in the nose. Yeah, yeah. RT, yeah. To, because sometimes you get negative for self test, true, but you have symptoms. I guess the key point here is the symptoms. If you have the symptoms, they don't feel great, might as well go to the clinic. They'll do a proper PCR on you. Okay. I guess that's uh, okay. Uh, Ahmad Shakir, we will provide you with a recording of this town hall. Uh, okay, I guess that's all for um, today's session. Uh, anything, if you have any inquiries uh, left, just uh, can approach MSES for the questions. I pass it to the uh, to Ali. So, uh, on behalf of the students, I would like to thank um, Dr. Gary uh, and uh, Deputy Dean, uh, Dr. Naraini, Deputy Dean, Dr. Yizani, and Deputy um, for uh, attending and accommodating the students' concerns. So um, I guess that's all for today. Thank you, uh, everyone, for joining today's session. So we will end today's session with the speaker for the All the best, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you all. And instructors alike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.